Okay, what is PRP, platelet-rich plasma? And if somebody told you they're gonna take blood and then inject it into your joint and stimulate it to heal, you'd probably say they're crazy. Well, they're not crazy, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm Dr. John Tate, I'm a non-surgical orthopedic doc specializing in regenerative medicine. And one of the tools we've been using for years is something called PRP, which stands for platelet-rich plasma. So I wanted to walk through a little history on this today and bring us forward all the way to 2024 to talk about the different versions of PRP and why one version of PRP is not likely the same version as another clinic or another clinic. Because there's a lot of variables that go into this. So if we talk about uh, PRP and we really go back in time, when did this all start? It was in the 1970s. So in the 1970s, they were figuring out that they could use platelets. So if we draw one's blood, we get red cells, white cells, and platelets. And if we take the platelets and we activate them, they kind of clump together. We've all seen this in a mechanism forming a, a clot and then a scab if we poke our center skin or get a scrape or a gouge. And so they were using it as a sealant in surgery. They could actually activate these platelets to help seal surgical fixations when they were uh, doing surgery. And it was really later in the 1990s they started to use this in dental uh, surgery and oral facial maxillo surgery and plastic surgery, things of the face. And they were using these platelet solutions because what they figured out they could do with this stuff is accelerate healing. Why was this happening? Because if we look at the action of those platelets and the mechanism, what in the, is inside platelets are a bunch of growth factors. Okay, so when if we take platelets and we put them into a tissue, those platelets are activated and they release those growth factors. And through those growth factors, they stimulate an attraction of other cells. So they're kind of orchestrators in a way, and they bring cells into that environment uh, to stimulate healing. They attract stem cells, they attract other activity in that tissue. So when you get injected with a solution of PRP, it triggers some inflammation, right? So if I was to take an injury like on a knee model here, say somebody has a ligament strain or a patellar tendon strain over the front of the knee, and say they've strained that tissue and it's walked through a normal healing course, which is four to six to eight weeks, um, depending on the severity of the injury, and it's still stubborn to heal. Well, orthopedic docs back in the 1990s started to borrow from those other specialties and say, well, I wonder if we took those things and we injected it into these stubborn injuries that haven't been able to heal, can we stimulate them to go a little bit faster? Or somebody who's just you know, partway there, can't really completely heal it to feel they're 100%, can we push the body and kind of nudge it nicely to heal and get better? So they took those things and they started, those things being the platelets, uh, very easy to access. Everybody's had a standard blood draw at some point in their life, so that's all we need to do. And then they would take the blood and then they would put it in a device. I got a few of them behind me over here on the counter, but you know, in the old days, we used to use a classic centrifuge. So you put a few tubes of blood in there, they would spin around and by weight be separated out. And then you could extract a very small layer of those cells, which were the platelets, because that's really all we wanted to do is grab that platelet layer and use that and resuspend it in the blood plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood, gives us an injectable by which we could direct a needle down to this area of injury and stimulate it to heal. So we drop all those platelets around that injury and then you have an achy knee, <laughs> number one, uh, during the procedure for a few minutes because we instigate this inflammation. So if we have an injury, we have inflammation, then we stimulate healing. So when you get PRP, it's not super uncomfortable, but it's not the most comfortable thing either because it's eliciting a little bit of inflammation on the front end to kind of kick off the sequence of events. But if we give the body time and space and we give it that boost of growth factors on the site that it needs it, then we can really stimulate things to go heal that haven't been able to heal maybe on their own. Maybe you've walked through six to eight weeks of healing time. Maybe you've done physical therapy you've modified your activity, trying to take weight off the knee, shoulder, whatever the injury is, but it's just not healing. So these are things we can now use and have been using since the 1990s. So more than 30 years, we've been using these things to stimulate healing in orthopedics. If we kind of then split out some of the nuances here, which I want to talk about, if you're studying this stuff and trying to figure out, well, what version's right for me, we got to understand three things, which is the training of the individual, okay, that's doing the treatment. So you would want to look for somebody with 
ideally a lot of training in this thing that you're seeking out. Um, Non-surgical orthopedic docs tend to be the docs that do a lot of this. There are some orthopedic surgeons that do these treatments as well, or there's primary care, uh, say family medicine or internal medicine docs that have also specialized in sports medicine, and they've gotten a lot of training to do these treatments as well. But you got to look for the credentials of the individual doing this to make sure they have enough experience doing this particular type of treatment for the particular injury you have. Because there's people using PRP for aesthetics, so we can drop PRP on somebody's face. They call these the vampire facelift a few years back. And same thing, it would stimulate some healing, some rejuvenation of the skin, the collagen. Um, but again, if somebody's doing aesthetics, they may not be orthopedically trained. Okay, so if I want an orthopedic treatment, I'm probably gonna go get an orthopedic doc. I want my face to look better, probably gonna go get treatment from an aesthetics doc. And there's some people that cross over and do a little bit of each, but I would encourage you to go to the person who does the most of the thing you need. You're probably gonna get a better outcome because two things in the other T, so training is one, technology is another thing. If I step out of the way and see some of this equipment behind me, these are specialized devices to process PRP. So this is where some of the variables come in and what type of PRP are you getting? So if we draw your blood and just say, for sake of argument, we all have the same number of platelets in this vial of blood, which isn't true. We all have different amounts in our bloodstream. So that's a variable. But say they're the same. Then depending on how we process the PRP, it's gonna change the characterization of that PRP. And this gets us into things people debate about uh, versions called leukocyte rich, leukocyte poor. What does that mean? Leukocytes are white cells. And as we process PRP down, as much as we try to separate and isolate only the PRP fraction, we're gonna get some white cells. So if it's leukocyte poor, it means that there's fewer white cells left behind. If it's leukocyte rich, it means there's more white cells left behind. And again, this is getting a little bit down in the details, but this matters because when we're concentrating those for different types of injuries, we may not want to stimulate an injury with something that is leukocyte rich or poor, depending on the injury we're treating. And does somebody have the ability to concentrate accordingly for the injury you have based on what we think uh, with the evidence we have in the literature, we know works better for certain injuries, okay? So training of the individual, technology of how we're processing down your PRP. And then the third one is technique. So if somebody is doing a one-off or a couple-off procedure a week and they're shooting a little PRP in somebody's knee once in a while versus somebody like me that's doing this hundreds of times a month, our technique is going to get a lot better the more we do this. And like anybody in their specialty, they're going to conferences, they're studying this stuff, hopefully, they're reading the literature and really folding those things back into their recipe to get the technique better and better over time. So the version I did in my fellowship when I was back in training in 2009 is not the version I'm doing today. But some people out there potentially doing PRP are doing the same version that they learned in 2009 with, with, with a simple benchtop centrifuge. And they're not using the technology that can get us a better and better product. Because that product matters, the training of the individual matters, and the technique by which you get the treatment really matters to the outcome that you're going to get. And so that may be attached to some of what people see out there at the variation and, and pricing around PRP from maybe one clinic to another. Since right now this space is largely elective treatment, not covered by insurance plans. So there's a lot of variability in how people price these things in their clinic. Uh, but what you're buying is the outcome and what you're buying is the person really doing it. But you wanna make sure they meet that criteria and have the right technology and technique around what you're getting to hopefully give you the best outcome you need when it comes to something like PRP. So again, to recap, PRP, great tool that we're using. Where are we using this the most? Soft tissue injuries like tendons and ligaments, but we're also using this for some articular cartilage problems inside the knee or the meniscus. Uh, very commonly is where we're deploying PRP nowadays in non-surgical orthopedics. So that's the hot take on uh, PRP from way back in the day in 1970s all the way up to current uh, 2024 methods. So if you like this, click the like button, subscribe if you want more content like this. And if you have any comments or questions, drop them below. If I didn't hit on something here in the video that you want to know about PRP, drop it down below and I'll build some additional content on that. And if I can help you in any way, there's a link down in the uh, notes below the video. 
that will take you over to my practice. If there's something you're struggling with and the other things just haven't been able to help you, I'm happy to help if I can. Fill out a few questions for us and you'll be introduced to somebody on my team to walk through your case and see if we can figure that situation out to get you back to what you love doing the most, which is not being injured on the sideline or in an office with a doctor like me.